Hey guys, welcome back to Live Your Style. I'm Shara, and as you guys know, we are officially moving to San Diego. Woohoo! Tyler and I, and Elena, have been packing for the last three days. Truly, I've learned so many tips about all the things when it comes to moving and packing, and I thought, why not make a video of this whole packing process, just in case any of you guys are in the middle of a move, about to move, could potentially move at one point in your life in the next 10 years. So the question of today's video is, when was the last time that you guys moved? Leave me your comment below. All right, are you guys ready to get into it? Let's get started. The first thing you wanna do, I feel like this is often my first step in a lot of my videos, is purge and declutter. When you're moving, you're gonna be packing up all your stuff. So this is a perfect time for you to kind of double this time you're setting aside to go through all your stuff. Look at everything individually and make the decision if you really wanna take it to the new place. This does two things. First, it helps your new house feel nice and clean, organized, fresh, and not cluttered. And the second thing, it helps you really identify what you really need to keep. That way you don't, there's a fly. You don't wanna spend money on boxes and pack things that you're gonna end up donating as soon as you get to your new place. Donate it, sell it, get rid of it before you put it in a box. That way you don't use unnecessary space and carry unnecessary boxes because nobody needs to be carrying more boxes than they absolutely have to. You know what I mean? The second thing you guys wanna do is wash everything. Okay, maybe not everything, but wash all of the essential things. I made sure to wash my curtains when I took them down. They can gather a lot of dust, and Tyler's allergic to dust, so I don't really wanna bring extra dust to the new house. I also wash things like our bed sheets, our pillowcases, and any of the towels that go in the bathroom. So that includes washcloths, hand towels, and regular body towels. And I do that because when you move in, it's a long, exhausting day. Um, and at the very end of the night, you wanna have access to clean towels and clean bed sheets. That way you can get in bed and just relax and feel at home and not feel like, now I have to do laundry. Step three is to get your supplies and to overestimate what you're gonna need. Because if not, you end up going back and forth to the hardware store or wherever you're gonna get your supplies. Like for me, I've already been to Home Depot twice to get my boxes and I might need even a few more. Every single one of you that left a comment on my Instagram picture or sent me a DM on Instagram stories when I asked you guys for tips, almost all of you in some way or another said, get more boxes than you think because it's just a thing. You go back and you need like, you have like three trips just to get boxes, not even any other supply, just boxes alone. I know that a lot of you guys sent me messages saying you could actually get boxes from Costco, that Walmart, if you go early enough after they do their truck unloading and drop off in the morning, they often have a ton of extra cardboard boxes of all shapes and sizes and they're more than willing to give you those boxes if you ask for them. Um, and a lot of you guys who happen to be military wives and things like that who move all the time, those were like some of your biggest tips that you sent. So that I think is a tremendous idea uh, because sometimes boxes can be kind of expensive. Ready box, bin it. You also wanna be mindful of what it is that you have to pack. So if you have a lot of dishes or a lot of plates, you maybe wanna get some bubble wrap. One of you guys gave a really great tip that I saw the other day to buy painter's paper and then rip that up because it's cheaper. You can get like a big roll of it and then roll it out and rip it up rather than buying the actual packing paper. I guess it's more expensive and you don't get as many. And you can also use different things like clothes if you want to, to wrap up your delicate things or even kitchen towels. I use some of my kitchen towels to wrap up plates or just to put in boxes to make sure that things wouldn't roll around and break. But you can also find little dividers to put your cups in Depending on your budget, they have all kinds of different things nowadays for you guys to buy. Some are a little unnecessary, but some are actually really great if you really want to make sure that things don't break and you have a safe, smooth delivery transportation situation. Also make sure you get extra tape. You're probably going to need more tape than you think. We've bought four rolls of tape and used almost three of them. And we still have some more packing to go. So. I did not, honestly, I thought, well, we'll use tape year round. We'll probably have two extra rolls by the end of it. No, nope, we have almost used all of it and that's crazy. Number four, pack up room by room. So what I mean by that is if you start in your bathroom, 
Don't stop until your bathroom is completely packed up and or you've set aside the things that you wanna keep out intentionally to pack up at the very, very end. The reason I suggest this is oftentimes things are gonna get misplaced, you get distracted, you're in the middle of doing something in your kitchen and then you go into your living room and then you think, oh, I should put that in a box as well and you start a new box there and then you have like 75 open unfinished boxes, which A, gets to be very chaotic and all over the place and B, you're gonna end up forgetting to put something in a specific box. And it kind of makes more sense for us to pack everything up in a bathroom box because then when we get to the new house, we can unpack. I don't have to go find the candle box that's somewhere in like the 50 boxes that's lost and then find a candle to put in the bathroom. I just already know there's a candle in the bathroom box and I'll be able to set it up really quickly and really easily. Number five, put lighter items in bigger boxes and heavier items in smaller boxes. Why would you do that? Well, when you're moving on moving day, you don't wanna have a giant box that is so heavy because it's gonna be really, really hard to move. So if you can put all of your heavier stuff in a smaller, easier to carry box, you will protect those heavy items and you'll be a lot nicer to your back and to your friends' backs who are helping you move. And then all of the really light stuff like pillows and blankets and towels, you can really put a lot of those bigger, bulkier items into a bigger box and carry them all out at one time. Good way to maximize your time and your space and help your back. Number six, pack an essentials box. Okay, so the essentials box is key because if you're trying to get ahead in packing like we are, we started packing like five or six days before our official move day, and we're trying to do a little bit each day, that way we're not super overwhelmed. So you kind of have to have the mindset of, okay, if I'm going on a trip for six days, since I kind of am, I'm gonna take out all of the underwear, all of the clothing, all the shoes, all the makeup, the toiletries, protein bars, the shoes, I think I already said that, lots of shoes. Take those things out and put them in a suitcase, I recommend, or a separate box if you can. And that way you can get things like your closet or your bathroom packed up early and get that checked off your list. And then you're not in need or in want when you are living your life before you get to the new place or once you do get to the new place. You also can pack an essentials box for your loved ones, your kids, and also your dogs. I left out a special bag for Scout. We'll put her food in there, her toys, um, her bed, things that are gonna be great for her to have right away and that way we're not confused on where her food ended up and we know how to feed her right when we get to the new place. Number seven, label everything. Okay, so even if it's just you and one other person that's moving it in, or especially if you have friends or movers that are helping you guys move, it's really important that you identify not only what is in the box, but where the box itself should end up. So I made a little key for people that help us move and for us and while we're packing. I actually had six different colors of tape. Tape them closed. I just used clear shipping tape. And then I put a piece of the colored tape on the side of the box, on both sides. That way, when people go to pick up the box, they can see the colors easily on the top and on the sides. And this is gonna really help clearly explain to anyone that touches the box where these things need to go. When I get to the new house, I will take the corresponding colors and put a piece of tape uh, on the door or the door frame next to that area. That way people can match up the color and it just moves a lot quicker and is super clear and people aren't like, hey, where does this box go? But on the outside, I also made sure to write out exactly what was in the box because you may think that you're gonna, you guys are gonna remember exactly what's in these boxes. However, on moving day, especially after you've done a bunch of boxes, you're not gonna exactly remember what's what. Be specific, do the work ahead of time, that way it's a lot more convenient when you get in. Number eight, paint and patch your holes. It is a great idea, especially if you're renting, to get your deposit back to do a lot of the work yourself, taking your things off of the walls, your mirrors, your clocks, your shelves, patching them with putty and sanding them down and then painting whatever the color was originally. I always say when you guys move in and you switch anything out, you wanna make sure that you save the hardware or the light fixtures or the blinds or anything that you take out of the space when you move in to customize it as your own, but just make sure that you store it appropriately. I always put things in one little box, so all the knobs and random hardware pieces that I didn't like originally with this place, I put it in a plastic baggie and I stuck it in a box. And when I move out, I switch all the knobs back to the originals. I take the knobs that I bring in that I bought from Anthro or wherever that are kind of nice. I bring them with me to the next place. That way I can customize our new home as well.
Number nine, schedule a donation of the things that you're getting rid of or sell it on an app like OfferUp or Craigslist or try to negotiate a deal with the next future tenant, the person that's moving in after you. We know the guy that's moving in. So we were able to connect with him and offer him our TV if we didn't want to bring it or the shelves that we already put up or organizational aids that we have in our space. It's a solution to a problem that exists in this space that they're moving into and we were able to make a couple hundred bucks. So that's a really good solution. But if you don't know that person that's moving in, sell it on offer up if it's furniture or donate it if you just don't want to have to go through the hassle. Bring in the guns back. Number 10, this is kind of on moving day. We're progressing in the process. This is what I plan to do. I have left out a few things from boxes. Things like our plants, things like our pets, <laughs> Scout. I know that I'm gonna pack up my computer and our like medical documents, maybe even tax documents, things that have our identity attached to them and our cameras and our filming equipment. All that stuff is just like, I'd rather me move it and that'll be something that I bring with me in my car, not in the moving van, if you know what I mean. I don't know why I said it that way. It wasn't like, if you know what I mean moment, but anyway, let's move on to the last and final tip. Dogs definitely sense when you are packing. Scout has been like so confused as to why everything is going in boxes. I think she's fearful that she's gonna end up going in a box next. I would recommend a few things. One, keep them with you when you move in. Two, bring something that smells like their current home, so their bed, their toys. Even if you wanna get new stuff, you totally can, but I recommend keeping some of the older familiar stuff to make sure they have their scent in the home. You also wanna keep up the current routine and don't forget to exercise them and play with them. And last but not least, from what I've read online, it's dogs need structure. So if they're in a new place and they're in a new home, you need to make sure you bring back the puppy rules and just basic commands that allow them to know everything's okay, everything's normal. We're just in a new fabulous house that's way better than the last. Okay, really, I'm done doing that. That's the last time, I promise. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope I was able to help a few of you that are in the process of moving or almost about to move. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. I'm excited for a new, fresh, clean slate and I hope you guys are excited to follow along. If you guys haven't followed on Instagram, be sure to go follow on Instagram. We're doing a lot of different things there and we will be sharing our journey as we go. If you haven't thumbs up this video, please, please do. It helps us so much. Don't forget to leave us your comment on when the last time you moved was and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.